Welcome to episode 59 of Nobody Special. On this episode, we talk about pastors, their sneakers, and whether or not they can play basketball. The Gospel Outpost presents Nobody Special. Hey everyone, welcome to Nobody Special. Uh, this is a podcast of usually two nobodies talking about the somebody who matters by taking a peek into pop culture, politics, and everything in between, all while not taking any of it too seriously. I'm Danny, the Brunley Lonely of Nobody Special, and uh, Caleb is actually, he cannot join us today. It is actually really sad. Um, I felt really confident coming into this episode thinking, yeah, I can do it. It's just a one episode, uh, but... Um, this is horrible, <laughs> planning this whole thing alone and actually doing it. So it's going to be a bit of a different episode. Um, it's going to be a few things going on. Caleb is actually prepping to shoot a movie, uh, and uh, it's it's really cool. It's actually penned by one of the most attractive people he ever has met, me. Um, and it's it's really cool, but it starts filming tomorrow, so... He's taking the night off, so that means you're stuck with me for the whole night. Um, a few people did turn in questions as I put out an Instagram poll, but we're going to save those for future episodes. And actually, one of them, we're kind of talking about a few different options on how to cover it because there could be some really cool things to do. So all that's coming up. Um, but overall, uh, I, I, I'll i be doing this episode. I found some things I was really interested in talking about, but it is going to be a bit of a different episode because it's just uh, me and we're probably not going to go for our full 45 because who can listen to me for 45? I have headphones on, and if, if this is what you hear every week, it's quite painful. Uh, also, Caleb has the better camera, just a bit of BTS. Caleb has a fantastic camera and is typically in charge of that part. I have a mediocre camera, but uh, at some point I'm going to have to pause it and start it over. <laughs> so uh, close to a mid-2000s. Uh, YouTube, there's going to be some jump cuts in this, so just bear, you, you know, both of us will plow ahead on that. Um, but overall, it's been a good week, a ton going on, it's a good movie. Caleb, I am so, alright guys, as I say, he's filming a movie, I gotta tell everybody, I just gotta brag on him a bit. Uh, the thing is awesome, and the things he's trying to do are incredible. Uh, as it comes out, we will... Well, I'm committing him to this. Uh, I'll find a, a way to get it to people or uh, get access to it because it's it's going to be pretty awesome. He's put a lot of effort into this, and I just got to tell everybody that the man is a very talented person and he's going to go many places through this. So um, it's been really cool to kind of be a part of the process and all that. Oh, yeah, that also explains my beard. Or uh, my scruff. This is, um, here's what's sad. I grow facial hair at about the same rate as someone who is uh, 13 or 14. And so um, it's really painful and my skin is itchy. And that is the least masculine thing I ever say is that my skin itches. Um, which is about how I feel all the time. So if I'm doing this or if I'm kind of awkward holding my hands is because I'm wanting to do this and touch my face. And uh, it really hurts. My face hurts. Now, Caleb said to put coconut oil on it, and that'll help the um, uh, the sensitive nature of my skin. But also, that's weird. That's that's just weird to be smearing coconut oil on the face. I don't know. I don't enjoy coconut, and just greasing up just seems a bit kind of strange. Uh, so we're probably not going to do that. We're going to power through and just see how this thing goes. Um and the dog is on the couch, and she's trying to fall asleep, but, uh, oh, no, there she is. Sorry, I said her name. So it's just going to be me and her in here tonight. But that doesn't mean that there's nothing going on outside all over the place. Um, if people tune into certain Christian news places like churchleaders.com and a couple others, they'll I notice that there has been a, a recent Instagram account that has popped up. Um, uh, this account... <laughs> It actually uh, started pretty small, and then because of these articles of the people that found it, grew pretty quick, actually faster than they had intended on it growing. Uh, they cover the mm, the fashion aspects of Christianity, specifically these mega churches and mega church pastors. Uh, so they're covering 
the things they buy, the things they put on, and it's preachers and sneakers on Instagram. Uh, and this thing, I got to tell you, it's buck wild. I was on there a bit just kind of going through it. There's a lot of emotions that come out of it. But the thing they do is they'll take these preachers that they stream their uh, church services, they stream their uh, content, and typically they'll have on some pretty good shoes. So they go through, and in having the knowledge of shoes they have, uh, they figure out the type of shoes they have on, and then the going cost of the retail a price of these shoes. Um, and then they post them side by side, saying certain things closer to the drip of this pastor, which I, hey, I'm going to be honest, I don't really know if that's offensive or not uh, to say the word drip, but I will probably not say it again, just in case. But, <laughs> um, and, and then occasionally gets into other things closer like pants, belts, and that type of thing. Now, uh, the reaction this has gotten out of the Christian community has been about the thing that you'd probably expect that it is. There are some people that are very, very upset at the amount of co- of uh, money that pastors are pouring into fashion and into other items. Um, and then there are others that are coming to the defense of these pastors, claiming things closer to, well, it's their money, they can spend it how they see fit. Um, and, and overall, it's caused a lot of conversation. Uh, on, on their Instagram stories, I always forget what they are. Facebook has store they all have stories. I don't know. On their stories, they did kind of an AMA and ask, is anything? Um, and overall, they stayed pretty neutral, and I got to hand it to them on that because the questions that they're getting were a minefield. They're saying, you know, they're trying to get them to double down on some kind of statement or make a judgment call on some content of it or... or th- or get their thoughts on it. As, as I can understand, the man doing this, just like shoes, and is Christian, and is able to notice, hey, that pastor, he's got some good shoes on. So he created this account just to do that. Overall, his comments, they don't explicit mention any kind of judgment or any kind of, uh, of criticism of it. Um, but it does also give this slightly tongue-in-cheek aspect of of the things going on. There, you know, there is this aspect that the uh, the pastor is spending a good amount of money on fashion. Um, one of them that comes up a few times is John Gray. Uh, John Gray has had on pairs of shoes around eight hundred dollars, that kind of things. Chad Veach, I think that's his name. Um, he he had on a pair of pants for like a thousand dollars. They were, and I think they were Gucci or something. It's some brand I don't actually have or know. Uh, I have a pair of uh, Nike shoes that I put on. They were fifty dollars, and I got them Bogo. So don't be coming at me unless you support our Patreon, which I am not starting because that I just I want to put out free content for people to enjoy. So hooray. Um, now, now, people, though, people had gone through this as, as m- m- thousands of people picked up on this account. They started to go through the common things that people tend to say about pastors during these times. Oh, that pastor shouldn't have that. He's spending too m- much cash on that. It's just a waste of money. Uh, I can't believe their tithing is going to that. You know, the common things people tend to say. And I'm positive, as I'm mentioning this, everyone started to kind of go to this side or the other. Everyone has thoughts on this. And to that I say, good. Uh, It's okay to have thoughts on this. It's okay to be thinking through the things going on, to be thinking, okay, is this a thing that I think is appropriate or inappropriate? Uh, I'm going to do my best to give my thoughts on that, but I got to make a couple things clear. First of all, um, I'm not going to condemn any particular pastor on choices they make or on clothes they put on. Overall, I think that's a really bad standard. Now, granted, I do have thoughts, <laughs> um, but it, it isn't the place I have to condemn a person based on their clothing choice. Uh, just as if a person is coming into church and they're dressed in poor rags and everything else, I can't judge them on that either. God is trying to take a peek into our heart and not at our outside external um, clothing. God's taking a peek at everything going on inside that motivates our behavior. 
With that said, our external behavior is a, v- a very good determination of the things going on in our heart. And, and this is important to keep in mind because I'm not the judge, I'm not the jury, I'm not the executioner. I am the uh, a message, not even the message, I, I am the a messenger of a person pointing to Christ. Everything I need to do points back to Christ. So I'm not going to cast judgment on any particular pastor, on anything they've bought or do or have done. And I'll be honest about this, it's because a lot of times I've seen people criticize a, uh, a pastor because he drives a nice car. Oh, pastor has a BMW. Okay, first of all, the BMW is a relative kind of affordable car based on the type, uh, kind of model that they get. And also there's this idea that their pastor needs to be poor. Uh, and that's just not a thing I buy into. I don't think the pastor needs to be starving all the time. Um, with that said, <laughs> there is this amount of personal responsibility the pastor has to watch the uh, kind of the image that they're putting out based on what they buy, what they drive, where they go to, and that type of thing. Uh, The question that needs to be asked is, does this glorify God? So, as far as condemning a pastor, I'm I'm not going to do it. Um, You know, this Instagram account tends to, uh, it's a bit tongue-in-cheek, and it's a fine line that they're almost crossing on being too critical. Um, but overall, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give that over to God on, on the other end. Also, we can't know the full story. Uh, I, I mentioned John Gray, John Gray gets brought up in there a good amount of times. So kind of the dual ends of John Gray. So John Gray is a pastor. I don't remember where, but, um, the man comes out of an R and B background, also, I've heard him speak a few times. The man's hilarious. I got to hand that to him. He's very funny. He's he's a good communicator, that kind of thing. But he comes out of an R&B, ba- I think it's R&B, R&B background. So, um, and he was relatively successful in that. So as he's putting on these $1,000 sneakers to go preach, uh, part of it is understanding the culture that he was brought up in, that that type of thing is important. Uh, and I don't think it's it's this thing that's trying to scam his church out of money, but it's just you know the thing he's been taught, good or bad. I don't think it's this. Uh, I'm I'm trying to just you know give this personal image of 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 cash and and blessing. On the other end, <laughs> he is very connected to Joel Osteen and the prosperity gospel. Um, Joel Osteen's the big proponent of the, you know, name it and claim it, um, that the blessing of God, it tends to be monetary, that type of thing. And overall, I don't buy into that as a good gospel. It is a dangerous gospel um, because of the, (laughs) it's primarily dangerous because of the way that it uh, diminishes the actual gospel. Um, If the blessing of God is monetary, uh, then there is an eternal factor of blessing that I'm not understanding because I'm trading it to get money on earth. Um, money in heaven, not really a thing. Streets are made of gold. So I can't really imagine, you know, the amount of worth cash has because it's, it's, it's heaven, it's perfection, it's uh, the definition of riches and glory, and all of it comes out of our understanding and connection to God, period. There's nothing beyond that. So then how do all of us um, come to grips on this particular uh, aspect of pastors putting on $1,000 pants and this type of thing? Because I do think, though, there is this idea that the pastor needs to project an image of being successful in order to be popular to people. And part of the mentality behind this is, if I can be attractional to the point that people can understand that the blessing of God is on this place, then I can get them in in the door and at that point give them a gospel. Um, The attractional model of church. Uh, I believe that particular phrase, it was coined by Rick... Warren, who has, uh, as as of today, uh, backtracked on that a good amount. Now, granted, there's still aspects of it in there, but, um, you know, the goal of the gospel isn't to be attractional. 
but to be gospel. Uh, the gospel is is the end goal of itself. Uh, and it is the job of the Spirit to stir in people, to bring them to himself. You know, but all that still belongs to the Holy Spirit. In Galatians chapter 1, um, it tells us this, and this is become, it is going to become important. Uh, if if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you have received, let him be accursed. For am I trying to win the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. So the question to ask in all of this is, who are we trying to impress? Because <laughs> a, lo- a, a good amount of these things, I'm, you know, these are major purchases to me. I mean, to me, they're major purchases. To them, it might not be. I don't know. I'm not sure about their book deals or everything else going on, but that's a major purchase. <laughs> An $800 pair of shoes is a major purchase. All to be able to get up on stage and essentially flex. Um, it's it's an it's a weird flex, but okay, <laughs> for a pastor to get up there and, and to demonstrate to the uh, a congregation the amount of w- wealth that he has. So the question I ask in these cases is, who are we trying to impress, and what message is being given in this context? Is this a message that people are, are coming closer to a true and authentic understanding of Christ out of this? Or is it just this kind of backdoor brag under the holy hat of praise Jesus question mark? And, and that's kind of the, the question that I have that is typically speaking figured out in their, um, in their preaching and in their theology. You know, as, as far as their preaching goes, what message is being proclaimed? Uh, and, and this is a thing that, that is, is, is difficult to determine because flashy things are flashy and attractive things tend to be um, viewed as, as better than non-flashy things. And, and that's just an odd, odd fact that attractive things are viewed as better than unattractive things. Therefore, if they're being attractive then they're viewed as better. Here's why this doesn't necessarily work. <laughs> because um, one of the major tools of the enemy is indeed uh, flash, um, is, is the ability to, to, to give this image off of blessing. In fact, even in the last days, the, 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 the enemy, the false prophet, the, the, uh, the false beast, sorry, the false prophet, the false Christ, the Antichrist and the beast. Wow, sorry, I just finished that Bible study too. Um, they're going to give off this image that they can be a blessing to people. Actually, the prostitute on on the, the dragon is going to give this kind of an image of prosperity, you know, that, that they'll be prosperous if they deny Christ and follow her. And it's not going to actually pay out. Um, but in our context... We tend to do the same thing. We appreciate a, uh, a well-dressed person. Um, people that aren't as nicely dressed tend to be viewed as a little bit different. Um, you know, we tend to not speak to them so much. But in truth, those could be the people that either a they need to hear the gospel the uh, most or have a good amount of uh, wisdom. I actually had um, kind of a seminary professor. He's probably my favorite seminary a professor that. Um, on certain days he would come in in a tie and all kind of dressed up and all that. Uh, and then on other days he would come in in jeans and a Superman t-shirt. And this man is one of the smartest people I've ever met. And he actually has his own podcast that I think updates every now and then. So Ryan, get on it. Uh, your podcast is amazing. Um, but he, he, <laughs> I mean, he had this ability to both speak truth in any context to any people, uh, in spite, well, not in spite, wow, that sounded mean, um, what's the word, oh, you know, there's this ability to speak truth that wasn't dependent on his clothing, not in spite, <laughs> um, the, it, and, and at, 
it actually it ha- it had the effect of making him more approachable. To be honest, to have him in this uh, kind of Superman T shirt, it was it was really awesome to have this you know, this top tier kind of seminary professor um, going through scripture while in a Superman T shirt because um, he also had to move bookshelves and some other stuff. But it it was still the same person in spite of the fancy clothes they put on. In another kind of a context, uh, a person can be great good or great kind of evil in spite or or as indicated by their clothes. Just because a person carries a nice kind of suit doesn't mean that the thing they're speaking is true. And it's our job, as painful as this may be, to think critically about the things people are claiming in order to, to determine, is this a thing that's glorifying God? If it isn't, we need to go ahead and push it out. And if it is... Cling to it. So, you know, this is part of the deal going on there, that there's this, you know, this battle between clothing. But on on the other end, um, our act towards judging pastors tends to be pretty quick. We do tend to rush to judge pastors based on things they purchase. Um, I got to say this, there's nothing inherently wrong with buying nice things. Overall, it isn't a sin to own nice things. There are plenty of cases, biblically speaking, that um, people have owned wealth and it is as a blessing out of God. And now the difference is they weren't trying to procure monetary gain as blessing, but God did bless them in a financial sense, because that can be a blessing of God. It's not the ultimate blessing of God, but it is a blessing of God. So, if a pastor is being blessed by God in a monetary sense, we have to understand that that could be okay. I do think a few of the comments in there, they do tend to bring out the jealousy in people. Uh, they they're jealous that the you know this a person who has worked hard hopefully um, you know that they own nice things. Now, granted, to be honest, I think these purchases are stupid and um, probably not in the best interest of the pastor, the congregation, or anybody else in there to spend that much and flash it. Uh, it's 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 a thing that because pastors are understand they're under more scrutiny than other people that, you know, I got to be honest, I don't even disagree on, but understanding that they're under more scrutiny, they have to be careful of the things they do and the image they put out. If they're putting on the, this image that they take their, oh, or, or that there's enough of a paycheck to buy thousand dollar pants and, and have that kind of expenditure, and it's a, a, a normal expenditure, then, you know, that, you know, the, you know, to an extent, they have to understand that that's the congregation's tithe money. Um, but that doesn't give the congregation permission to be jealous. You know, maybe that pastor it has put a, a, a good amount of, of money aside every time, has been intentional about you know, not buying other things. It's, 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 it's a thing that they wanted to do and that's fine. Um, you know, specific kind of the car thing. I know people pick on pastors all the time because of the car they drive. Um, I know I've, I've, I've brought up the pastor that bought a fourth jet and there are, (laughs) I'm okay calling that out. Every case of a pastor buying a nice thing, though, I'm not okay on that, and it's important in our hearts to have them not be jealousy, but instead, if there is anger, to be positive, it's righteous. Um, And and that if if I'm trying to do other things, you know, if I'm buying fancier clothes, or if I think that particular tie or pants or jacket is going to give me status, and then I'm trying to find things in clothes that I need to be finding in God. And and it's easy to criticize pastors, but that's a thing all of us struggle through also, is trying to find status in anything other than God. Um, being a, a youth pastor and even still kind of connecting to a few teens, uh, 
that culture is very prominent in middle and high school. This idea of I have to have the good shoes, the non-scuffed shoes. Uh, it has to be a Gucci. And, and even in a, lot, a ton of the circles I'm still in, the image of success is more important than actual success. And that's madness. Um, because I have to put out this image in order to be accepted, in order to do business, in order to be successful. And that's insane. And I want to call that out as insane because it's insane. If I'm trying to find my worth in anything other than Christ or uh, paint an image in anything other than Christ, then frankly, I don't understand the, the fullness of the gospel. Our worth can only come from God. It doesn't matter if I'm in good clothing or bad clothing. At my core, I am defined by God and who he is instead of by the clothes I put on or the things I do. So vanity is an idol, and idolatry is anything that takes the, the place that God should have. And and this isn't just a thing people that are trying to find nice clothing a struggle through. All of us struggle through that. It's important to like stop and take a, a moment and... and and be honest about the parts that we feel are, um, are, are, are our own idols. And, and besides, it could be, a, a, <laughs> could be a lot worse than just a pastor buying a nice pair of shoes. Uh, you know, there could be, I don't know, a pastor, you know, who turns his stage into a full basketball court. I don't think that's happened in the news recently. Is this court amazing? I have never in my life. In my life seen a basketball court like this in church. I don't think it's ever been done in the history of Christianity. Okay, so Pastor Ed... Young is a pastor in the Dallas area uh, of of a church called uh, Fellowship Church. Um, it's it's in Dallas area. He is also kind of a frequent speaker at creative church conferences. I I think that's a C three conference or something like that. Um, and he oh, over the course of March <laughs> took his church stage and put down an entire <laughs> basketball uh, field for kind of a sermon series he called March Madness. Um, I, I know sports good. I understand March Madness is a college basketball thing because it's all the top teams trying to figure out who, who the number one team is. To be honest, the num- the, that game might be going on now. I really don't know. I'm so bad at this, and I'm so sorry. I know everybody's bracket is busted and nothing makes sense anymore, but that, hey, that's how I live every day, so whatever. Um, but he, uh, um, he, he, he turned his basketball court into, sorry, he turned his church into a basketball court, uh, claiming that uh, no church in, in Christian history has ever done this ever. Which, I mean... There might be a reason for that. I don't know. Um, so, oh, oh yeah. Another thing about him is, and and why this is kind of making sense is, um, Pastor Young uh, at a point had been on a basketball team for Florida State, and as ever, as everybody knows, I am a graduate of the University of Florida. So allow me to take a minute to talk to a few of my Florida State fans. Um, we joke that Florida State is a clown college, ha, 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 but then always follow that up by saying they have a ridiculously amazing um, kind of a, it's kind of a circus program because it's, you know, trapeze, that kind of stuff. It's amazing. So anytime that that's brought up, we kind of pause and say like, no, but seriously though, if that's a thing that you're into, they have a really good program. So people have gone on to Cirque du Soleil and that kind of stuff. And they, it's really, it, it's a, it's a good program. But, um, so that is, is a rivalry there that I'll try and, uh, uh keep internal. But overall, um, the man spent two years on a basketball team and then uh after that he felt as if god had been calling him to be a pastor so instead of staying on this team um he dropped out dropped out of a full college scholarship 
to go back home and start his training to become a pastor. He attended school there. He eventually got his MDiv out of Southwestern Theological Seminary, I think, um, something close to that, and and has planted this church and, and grown it. And it's a fairly successful big church that has about, uh, I think I counted like nine campuses all across the country. So, um, you know, the idea of, of doing a basketball themed thing, um, (laughs) I'm not, I'm not going to hate on it too much, to be honest. Um, I wouldn't do it, but that's because I don't play basketball. I'm really bad at basketball. Uh, this, this doesn't play bas. It's built to play football, but guess what? It don't play football either. It don't like getting hit. It bruises, it it bruises like pre, bruises like a peach. So please don't hit me. Um, so I guess the struggle I'm having, cause I did listen to two of his sermons about it. Um, and I gotta be honest, I'm, I'm torn on this. Um, I think I, I don't think that he's doing this thing to call attention to himself. I don't think that's the thing going on here. Um, with that said, he spent the whole uh, kind of sermon dribbling the basketball and trying to make shots. Now, granted, you know, there's also teaching in that, but the teaching was kind of secondary to the basketball. The first m- mention of Scripture and the first is brought up in, in, around minute 20. But but this is the thing I think oh, uh, was going on. That man grew up playing basketball. And his avenue of communicating and understanding of the gospel, it, it, it was even, you know, formed by basketball. And then being on that team and having the opportunity to go back and talk to, uh, to that team um, gave him an opportunity to share gospel to people that he may not have had if, if it hadn't been towards basketball. And so... I think the, the the thing he was trying to do is use his tools and passion and things that he understands in order to best communicate a truth that God has placed inside of him. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm really torn on this. Um, and not just because I'm calling him out by name. I, I do think that this is good intentioned. Uh, again, I wouldn't do this. Basketball courts are expensive, and it's it's a, a good amount of flash that I don't think the, the gospel necessarily needs. Um, we don't have to m- make the gospel flashy or try and tart it up. And I'm not just talking to pastors on this. I'm talking to everybody. If I, I need to include tip or sorry tricks and and polish, I don't need to polish the gospel because it is perfect in itself. Um, I don't I need to tart it up or put makeup on it or turn it into this thing that it isn't or give people the idea that if they come to Christ, it's all, all going to be this massive spectacle of confetti and, and bright shining l- 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 lights and fun. The gospel at its core is that I am a sinner and Christ came to die for my sins so that I could go into eternity. If I can't find a way to make that relevant to a person without having to add flash and flare, I don't think I really understand that. If the offer is eternal life, what can I add to that that makes it more attractive? And that's the problem I have on a good amount of these gimmicks and even the flexing of, of the shoes is that it turns church and Christianity into a gimmick instead of into this gospel, a gospel gift that comes out of God. And the question is, am I trying to call attention to me and, and the things I'm doing, or am I trying to call attention to God? Um, in Matthew 5... Was it Matthew 5? Oh, yeah. In Matthew 5, Matthew 5, it tells us that you are the light of the world. 
and a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people l- light a l- 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 lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And this, I think, is a big determining factor, is who gets the glory? Am I doing things in order to give me glory, to make my name great, so that people talk about the thing I did in a, spe- in a specific thing? Or am I trying to do uh, to do these things to allow the l- 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 light of Christ that is inside to come out in order that people could give God glory? I... um. The, and I think this is a struggle all of us face. I know I face this all the time. Uh, I enjoy credit, you know, for good things. Just to be fully honest and transparent, I enjoy getting uh, complimented. I I enjoy that type of encouragement. I need that kind of encouragement. Um, but also, there is an extent that if I do a good thing, I I want people to say, "Wow, that Danny's so neat. He did a good thing. Good for him." Uh, and, and, and that isn't always healthy thing to, uh, strive towards. It's not a thing all of us need to be trying to find is this approval out of man. Um, all I do needs to be to give God glory because it's God that does all things and produces the salvation inside that is able to save others. I have very little to do with any of that process. Um, Was it G.K. Chesterton or Jonathan Edwards? I think it was Chesterton. I don't know. But one of them said, the only thing I contributed to my salvation is the sin that made it necessary. Um, (laughs) Which is a really biting statement, but um, if I'm trying to communicate the gospel to people, and call attention to anything I've done, the thing I need to call attention to is is the sin that God has overcome. And and to not even get bogged down in that, because that's the old uh, me, it's not the new me, that as Christ comes in, as the Holy Spirit comes in, I'm created anew and, and made to communicate the gospel out of the goodness and glory of God. As people, as Christians, the term actually meaning little Christ, our idea is that as people look at us, they could get an image and a taste of God, which changes, I'm going to be honest, that puts a lot of pressure on us and changes a lot of the things all of us do. Um, Instead of then asking, am I doing this for my own good? I ask, is this a a help or a hindrance to the gospel I'm trying to communicate to others? Um, For Pastor Ed, I don't know. This one we could probably debate on. And uh, again, I'm not going to take a hard stance on it because um, I think based on the things he does and and the pool he gets to play in, Pastor Ed struggles through the same stuff all of us do, but just has a a larger pool and and a larger audience because of it. And it's important that although I need to think critically about these things and whether or not they give glory to God, I need to first take scripture and apply it to myself and, and determine, is this a thing I struggle through also, but on probably, hopefully, another smaller scale? I've never turned anything into a basketball court. I've never tried um, <laughs> because it isn't feasible for me. This man has the ability to do that. Doesn't mean he should, but it means he can. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's still the same heart kind of an issue that's going on in all of us, though, is am I giving glory to God? Um, at, at, at the same time, again, and I'm doing a lot of fence writing on this today on, on both ends because the thing I'm trying to encourage is for us to take a peek at ourselves, but also um, we don't need that type of flash and flare um the the repercussions this has had on social media i'm going to be honest for from preachers and sneakers and uh building a basketball court hasn't been great um 
you know, there's been an image painted of Christians that it's this, this uh, wasteful spending, and in this idea of of Christians taking in money that people pay out of their paycheck, um, and wasting it on this kind of stuff. Um, personally, I think some of that criticism is fair on this, and it is a thing people are going to be needing to pray through and actually figure out, is this the type of church they're trying to support? But beyond that, um, this is the thing all of us have to be cautious of also. It says in in the f- 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 final days, people's, uh, people are going to be lovers of themselves and of um, money. Uh, I think it's 2 Timothy 3... Yeah, 2 Timothy 3, uh, 15 through 16. But understand this, that in the last days, there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, and having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people. So what this is talking about is is this idea that it'll appear to be this God-based thought process, but as it actually unfolds itself, it's the gratification of the self. Um, it's, it's people that claim to do things in, in the name of God, but actually is just in, in the, the, the name of them. And, 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 and there's going to be this image of success in appealing things, but as it comes down to it, it's not going to be out of God. And those are the kinds of people we need to avoid, uh, specifically as, as pastors. Um, or as as people attending church, if if the pastor preaches anything other than scripture or other than the, the truth of the gospel, it is okay to get out of that church. Um, now, granted, I'm not talking about slight minor doctrinal uh, uh, differences or uh, uh, debated topics, because all of us are exploring scripture together. But if they're claiming that anything other than Christ is able to give us our worth and salvation, if anything other than those primary doctrines are preached, it's okay to get out. Um, if if the pastor is only there to indulge himself, it's okay to get out. Um, if, if the congregation is only trying to hear those things that tickle their own personal senses um, instead of actual truth that is sometimes painful and hard, it's okay to get out. But that doesn't I mean, just because I have a disagreement that I need to just go. It's important to do things the r- 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 right w- oh, way. Go to the pastor first. Talk to them. If that agreement can't be brought, bring it to the elders. If there's no elders, then you go a step above. But give it a chance because you know this isn't about I'm trying to find the church that suits me best. It's about us coming together in the body of Christ together. There's a... Uh, the unity that has to be met in this context. So um, my challenge to everyone out there, it's kind of a little bit of a different podcast, but I appreciate everyone sticking it out. But um, it's easy to get angry at these things. Instead, take a moment to think about it in our personal context and, and if this is a thing that we struggle through. Uh, also, in the comments of either our YouTube on this or the webpage or anything else, I want to know people's thoughts on on these things, on uh, preachers and sneakers and on the basketball court. Um, Or if people have questions about anything brought up or anything not brought up or are interested in getting a question on for Caleb and I to answer, Caleb should be back next week. Uh, Please go to thegospeloutpost.com slash nobody special. And check us out on Facebook at Nobody Special Podcast or Instagram at Nobody Special Podcast. So uh, I appreciate everyone hanging in for the past 
uh, about half an hour, I think. I'm not really sure. I had to get up a few times, but uh, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, Caleb's going to be back. There's going to be a great thing going on. There's also a few stories coming up that we are planning on covering, such as Kanye West is hosting an Easter service at Coachella on top of a mountain. Yeah, we're going to need to talk about that as soon as we figure out as much as we can about it. Um, and that will be a lot of fun. A couple other things. Uh, and Mr. Chi Chi, I got the question. We're actually thinking through that also. So do hang in there. And if any, anybody else is interested in giving us a question, please contact us on any of those ways and we will get to that question. So uh, that is going to do it for all, not all of us, just me here. Caleb, please come back. This is very lonely without you. And I've been talking to a camera for about an hour and it's exhausting. So. Uh, but that's going to do it for us today. So I'm Danny, Caleb's not here, and we are Nobody Special. <laughs> <laughs>